and welcome to the Metal Voice once again on the show, Tim Ripper Owens. Oh, I'm back. Back for the attack. Oh, wait, that's Doc in, isn't it? The sinner rides again. Yes. Right? I the am... sinner rides again. It should have so... been called Ripper Rides Again. That's what it should have been called. I'm talking to Ken now. That's it. That's going to my contract. September 29th, via Napalm Records. Tim Ripper Owens on vocals. AJ Mills on guitar. Tony Newton on bass. Sean Elk. I'm not Elk. sure if I pronounce Elk uh, properly something. on drums. And of course, KK Downing on guitar as well. All right, the album's coming out very soon. Ripper, I guess my first question is, before we get into the album, how have the live shows come across with the fans? What's the feedback so far? It's been unbelievable. I mean, I think if anybody's read the reviews or saw anything on it, it's been incredible. Um, I think it's always funny when I read someone, was um, they were shocked that it was as good as it was. But I think uh, I think what they're shocked at is, that, you know, we have pretty good, pretty big production, pyro, the screens. I mean, it's a it's a great show. It's a costly show, and it's a great show, you know. But we've we've been on fire. We've gotten better with uh, with every show, I, as you would. I mean, you know, coming off the gate, out of the gate like that, you're a new new lineup and doing it. But it's been really, really great. I can't, you know, I've actually sang as good as I've sang. I'm singing as good as I've sang in my whole life so, at this moment. Now, next week I might not be. So let's let's get this. <laughs> I'm almost 56. I might just go to the toilet, but I've been on fire, man. I've been sounding. I've just had total control and it's a lot of fun. We're having a lot of fun up there. You know, it's kind of like you re revisited your priest years, right? It, 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 that's what it's coming down to, right? Yeah. You know, it's funny is uh, the classic priest songs have always been an easier song for me to sing than my own. So it's kind of funny, you know, I mean, even, KK's Priest songs are are much more they're the more difficult songs in the set list to sing than the classic Priest songs. But what's great about doing the Priest songs is I sing them like me, you know. I mean, that's the great thing about doing it, but it's they're just a little bit easier to sing. But it's it's uh you know, I had 5 years I've said in interviews that I wasn't singing as great and then for the past year I've just gotten it back full on all of a sudden and uh it's been pretty good. The most sort of the most comments or some of the most interesting comments that I'm seeing is a lot of people, a lot of fans want to integrate your priest era into the set list. They, I think there's one or two songs, right? But they want to see more of that. Are you getting that vibe from everyone? Well, we knew we'd get that vibe and we wanted to do that right out of the gate. But the, the, the problem with us out of the gate was we were doing festivals and not our own shows. So you have to make a set list that's kind of adaptable to everybody, you know? And I think I think eventually when we start touring and touring and doing our own shows, there's two things that's going to happen. I would, I hope we mm -hmm. add one or two more of my ear. I think one-on-one -on -one has to be in the set list. I think Burning Hell two songs that, yeah. that have to be in a set list. It'd be nice to do Cathedral Spires because that's a, one that the fans ask for the most. Um, but I think we're going to be obviously adding more of KK's Priest in. I mean, that's we have six songs in there now of KK's Priest and. We'll be releasing two new videos soon, and so we'll add two more in, and we'll probably add another one from the first record and another one from the new record. And So I think that's what's going to start going in there as well. But I, there's no doubt people want to hear it. I mean, Judas Priest ignores it and ignored it and have, have you know, act like I was never in the band. I mean, uh, which is, it's fine. It makes my solo touring and KK's Priest touring all that more exciting for people because at least they can go hear it. And I, yeah, I think that's, that's something, but, I had that conversation with Ken from the start. Uh, I would have liked to have seen more of my era in there, but he explained it by saying, you know, we have to, you know, and it's really, it is festivals are a whole different animal than your own shows because you're, mm -hmm. you have different people there for different bands. So you need to do one that you can suck all these different people into your set list. Like I'm hearing a lot of, you know, I see a couple of people, I'm probably more in the minority saying this is a tribute band. This is a tribute band. I mean, what do you say to somebody who says that? And I know what you would say, but tell me, what would you say to someone who says 
This is a tribute, man. Well, it makes no sense. First of all, it's the stupidest comment. That's, I mean, listen. And you've seen these comments, right? You've seen these comments too. Well, I gotta be honest. Since we've been playing live, I've hardly ever seen them. So I I don't (laughs) see them much anymore because now the proof is in a pudding. It's like, well, this, yeah, this is. But listen, um, we're not talking about the sharpest tools in the shed with people on the internet. I mean. People, there's the stupidest comments I've ever read on there. And I come back to a lot of these people with funny comments and, oh, I'm sorry, I'll do my best to make you happy in the future, whatever. Um, But people are just stupid. They just get on the internet to just say things that make no sense whatsoever. Or they actually give you career advice when they're, they have no fucking careers at all, even in life. You can look at most of those people in life and go, you have a tough road, I'm sorry. I mean, I can't help that you... You know, your upbringing probably wasn't very good and you're miserable in life. And then they just spread it upon everybody around them. I, it, they just want people to, to, you know, and that's usually uh, that's all the people that are metal voice fans. You know, you guys got <laughs> fucking long haired want to be rocking guy that acts like he's what I think he wanted to be in the, in, the, in the interview people. And that failed for him. He failed interview and he hates everything about KK's priest. He's so fucking miserable. about it. I forget his name. He's so fucking miserable about every, everything. And it's like, so he just continually puts us down. It's like, dude, it's so great to, to watch the response from our concerts. You know, it's been, it's been overwhelming. I mean, the response to our shows and that's what, the proof is in the pudding. And I don't mind when people don't like us. You don't have, I don't like a lot of stuff, you know, I don't like stuff, but when it's, when they don't like it and they say it like a tribute band, it's like, I mean, KK is the founding member of Judas priest. I was in Judas priest. Uh, this is where half the set now is our own songs and, and three quarter of the set's going to be our own songs now. I mean, it's, it makes no sense, but, you know, they have their opinions and it's great. You get to have it. It's when they're stupid opinions. That's funny. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. Um, the new album. We called it the the Ripper Rides Again. No, the Sinner Rides Again. Um, tell me about the recording process. So you went, was this done remote or was this actually you went to the studio to uh, record your vocals? But everything was recorded in England except my vocals. I I had a hard time talking Canada to let me record my vocals here at my studio. That's just how I do it now. And I get the best out of it a lot of the times. Uh, if the material's good, um, you know, like my solo EP, Return to Death Row, that was recorded here. But I had to talk him into it. I said, Ken, listen, I can be here. We could be on video. I can record it. Uh, I could come out here and have coffee and, and go back. And, you know, it's – and it really – I could tell I could tell the difference from the first record. I mean, this record, the vocals uh, are, are way more passionate. And I think it's because I spent a lot of time on them. Uh, way more aggressive. Way more versatile. But I had to talk him into it because Ken's old school. And he's like, nah, I don't know. You got to be here to do it. And I'm like, come on, Ken. You know, let me just do it here. So finally, one day, I remember I got the email. I was like, hey, you can start recording there. I'm like, yes. All right. But everything else is recorded there. Um, uh, you know, drums. Uh, Sean's drumming on this new record. Is, is You could t- you could tell everybody is themselves now. I think it's really a band and a unit. Everybody's branched out you know me i've had a 30-year career so there's not a lot of branching out i could do at this point i'm i sing like me i am me and that's what you get but sean had even more to prove i think because it's like because he's so good and uh you could really hear it on this ken really let him go a little more on this and become himself so okay musically when you compare the first album to this album what do you think has changed or stayed the same How, how would you compare it well i think uh I think it's uh, cohesiveness is better. I think the sounds have a more cohesiveness. The songs sound have a more cohesive. I think they, even with all the musical changes in the songs, it mm-hmm. all runs great. It sounds better. I, 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 the first record was exactly what we needed. It was a more, a little more old school. Uh, the sound was more old school. Everything about it was, was a classic sound. This one has a little more punch to it, a little more aggressiveness. The sound is is absolutely unbelievably good. Um, I think it, you could just tell it's a real. Now it's like this is just we've moved into something even better, mm-hmm. which is hard. Last interview I did, he said, did you, "Did you have a lot of pressure on it?" I'm like, I don't think I didn't have any pressure. All the pressures on Ken. So um, 
I was like, I, I, I don't think we did. I think we knew what we had to do and we knew what we are as a band. Uh, but I think it's, it's, uh, it's progression and it's just, I just love it. I mean, I just think it sounds great. I mean, the songs like wash away your sins is so epic to end the record with. And I love that AJ gets to sing the beginning of it. At first I was mad. I'm like, yeah, hey, you took my vocals. See, I, I, I didn't know who was singing that part. There's no reference that that's yeah. you know, from a yeah, promo. We, we wanted to do something different and add like a little character thing here and there. And we let AJ sing a couple times like, cause he's so good anyways. And sometimes like that part, I didn't sound a whole lot different with me doing it when I first did it. But what made it great was it sounded like this different voice. And then I, you know, he's like, you know, then I come in with, and now we must feel the pain, but it comes from him doing that demons from a distance. And then there's so much things on this record like that, that we branched off and did. And uh, that song is, I love, I love that strike of the Viper right in your face. I love the ending song, Wash Away Your Sins. I think it's just epic. And musically and vocally, it's so good. Yeah, you do a great job. That, no question. I like Time 6, Time 6, six. Uh, You know, throughout the whole album, you kind of got these little growls happening. Sort of like they make a little guest appearance on every song. Little growls here and there or a little spoken word. Yeah, I do a lot. of. I got this weird thing where I, I do, especially when I'm recording myself. Because here's what happens is uh, I, you can use my vocals or not. I give them a lot of vocals. I sing, when I'm in my studio, I give you a lot of shit. So what I do is, like, there'll be songs, words starting, I'll be like, into the end of the verse. Like a, like most people in this real studio would be doing that with, with, you know, technology. But I'm so old school and used to doing stuff myself that I do a lot of stuff just... You know, it's kind of like when Judas Priest recorded British Steel and there's whatever song it was, and they had the cut where you're going, da, da, da. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you used to do it old school. I still record like Metal that. Gods. That's what it was. Yeah. It was Metal Gods at the end of Metal Gods with Cutlery. I do a lot of stuff and I overdo it and they could use it or not, you know. And I, and uh, I love, I just, I feel the, I just love the vocals on this record. I love what I had to work with. I love what Ken gave me to work with. And I took it to a, a different level for myself to to just put a lot of character. Listen, you know that we grew up with, and I grew up with my singers that I like growing up with was people like Ronnie James Dio, Rob, David Bowie, John Oliva, people who sang in characters and told a story. And and whether the songs are heavy or not, I still like to do. And fortunately, I can sing uh, really heavy and really mellow and really light and really high and really low. So I can kind of do all that. Yeah. Um, did you uh, lend a hand? I know KK likes to write the songs. He's sort of in his, in his, in his sort of mindset of he wants to write all the songs. Did you get to, to add your own thing? Did you get to do a little bit of songwriting this time around? I really did. And I mean, I got to add, I got to change some vocal lines around and some, and, and sing them how I would want to sing them. He would give me the idea. Then I would sing them how, how I thought it would go, which a lot of times were more aggressive than, than what it might have was originally. Um, a lot more high notes than were probably there. It's just funny. There's freaking, after you hear it back, after you're in the studio, then you hear all the songs like, man, I sang a lot of high notes just out of nowhere. They're everywhere. And, uh, but you know, I understand it because Ken's got a lot to prove to the fans and to himself. He's like, I we've said this probably in the past. I've said it, that Ken's, been writing music for 50 years with with mm. the guys i think everybody who listens to like i, I still said to see before i love that they say that kind of sounds reminds me of parts of judas priest and i'm like how about it reminds you of kk downing because that's that's who's writing the stuff it's kk downing who wrote the judas priest songs i mean so uh but he i, I understand it you know i got to do that with my solo record and my other records and um but I love that I can be, I could just come in there and be Ripper Owens and, and sing it how I want to sing it, you know? Um, how do, for, from my perspective, I listen to the studio songs and I see when you guys play them live, it just seems like they translate even better live than they do on record. They're meant to be played live. They're very anthemic. Am I correct in this? I mean, do you think that they really come across great live and people really enjoy them? 
I think they do. And what's really funny about that. Now, listen, when you have a songwriter like KK, he's always in his career thought of that, right? He's the old school guy that thinks about writing songs in the studio that are going to be sung live. Uh, they're, they're, like I said earlier, they're tougher to sing than the classic priest songs. They're tougher to sing. Um, but I've always prided myself on singing songs live like they were sung in a studio. I don't like singers that don't, that change the songs live or can't sing them live or have never seen the same version live. I love to, you know, Ronnie Dio sang them live like they sang them in a studio. I love to do that. And these songs are, are great to do that with. And it is crazy. I mean, we're doing one more shot at glory and the crowd sing at the festivals too. That's what I'm getting at. That's what I'm, even, even the, uh, the whirlwind, what's it called? Uh, reap the whirlwind, reap the whirlwind. That's right. And, and, you know, brothers of the road and, and, you know, singing, raise your fist. Oh, and the people are singing, but hellfire thunderbolt right out of the gate, hellfire. <laughs> and it's like, you know, this is festivals that people are, we're a new band and people aren't there to see us a lot of people, right? I mean, there's, you know, festivals are the hardest thing for bands to do because, uh, especially like us, it's snappy. It, it's been remarkable in the, in the, and I can't imagine how great our own shows are going to be, but yeah, they've come across great. Uh, one more shot at glory. When we go into that second, you know, opening with hellfire thunderbolt, and one more shot at glory. They're the perfect two openers and the crowd has just been, been out of this world so yeah they go they come across live and i think we perform them good live um i've been singing them really good live and i think that helps helps them come across Would now when i speak, speak, listen when i say yeah they probably won't come across as good that's gonna <laughs> I, I told the band you better be spot on pretty soon because i'm not always gonna sing these songs this good so we're, we're i'm in a moment right now let me have my moment so you guys uh pretty soon you're gonna have to pick me up I'm just going to run through these songs really fast. Sons of the Sentinel, everybody knows. I, I, was it released first? Was that the first song that was released? Either way, great. The guitar work is incredible. The dual harmonies on that song are just yeah. like sort of off the charts. It was, it, hey, funny about that. That hasn't been released yet. Nobody's heard it. No, nobody's heard it. Sorry. The funny thing about that is when I record that at home, that song's really high. Well, that was the background vocals that I gave him. That wasn't my main <laughs> vocal line. I gave him a regular verse and then I gave him a low one to harmonize with it. And then I gave him a high one to go. And then I got it back. I'm like, holy crap, you used that high vocals as my main one. And I was like, whoo, that's going to be fun to sing live. But just to add the guitar harmonies, they're like on steroids. Yeah. I was like, fan. holy crap, what is going on here? Uh, just so, I guess people haven't heard that uh, strike of the Viper, a little bit of growls like we were talking about, right? I love uh, my favorites. It's like two and a half minute song that's just right in your face. That's going to be one of our videos coming out pretty soon. And uh, um, I love that song. When I got it, I was like, and I think AJ wrote that song with with Ken. And uh, I love it. I think it's it's uh, it's fantastic. Reap the Whirlwind, which which everybody knows by now because that was released either yeah. as a live performance or as a video. I don't remember. One more shot at Glory. That's the super catchy one off the album. Was yeah. that released as well? I think that was yeah. released, right? The first one released. Yeah, super catchy. Uh, you know, again, fits in right in with the first album of, you know, that sort of style. Heim 66. Now we're getting into sort of a little more orchestrations at the beginning. Uh, yeah. A little, again, some more growls. Him 66. Him 66 is, what's cool about it is it's got like a choir thing going on. So, yeah, it starts to get in a little bit of epic thing. Vocals are all over the place. The Sinner Rides Again, not the Reaper Rides Again, but The Sinner yep. Rides Again. Yep. That's another cool track. Yep. Uh, uh, very catchy as well. Keeper of the Graves. Now we're getting into a little more epic territory, correct? Thoughts yes. on that one? Yeah, it's it, it, the record really ends with some big epic songs and and some mellow vocals and then the heavy vocals. What's nice is that go, a lot of these songs go from these pretty nice mellow vocals to just vocals that smash you right in your face you know so that one that one and then keeper of the graves is like that and then pledge your souls uh um has that kind of beginning like raise your fist you know oh oh you can hear it and it's like um I, it's a great tune that's like a big would you pledge your souls would you scream out loud it's pretty big you know 
and wash away your sins. You got that flanger on the guitar. It's literally slow, makes yeah. it kind of creepy. At the same time, brings you back to the seventies. You know that chorus it, flanger on the guitar sound, right? It's it's something straight off of rock and roll or something, man. It's <laughs> you know what I said about that. Somebody said it to me. I think it was a friend of mine. I was playing it for, and I said, uh, uh, or my girlfriend. I said, listen. And they said, oh, my God, it's so sad that like the beginning, like they were sad from the beginning of the guitar, just his guitar playing. They're like, it makes me want to cry. And then and then AJ comes in singing and then I come in singing and they're like, oh, my God, now you're making me sad. It's kind of got. But the verses of Wash Away Your Sins are, are my favorite verses. They just got that just right in your face and it's got that groove and your head's gro- i just love it man that's a it's a great great song tim you know you've always been a guest on so many bands you so many projects do you feel finally like you know i got a home now in a sense like i'm part of something now you know something more constant do well you have that I, do. Sense? I do i do i actually you know i'm kind of lucky because i feel at home doing solo touring and stuff and, and putting that solo EP out made me go, here's a home as well. I got myself a home. I can, cause I tour it solo. So now that I have a solo EP and solo record that'll come out, but you know, this is the one that you want to make it. It's hard nowadays. First of all, the show we take on a road is so damn expensive that Ken's not going to make it a cheesy show and a low budget show. And he's just not going to show up and jam like I would solo. So it's hard to probably constantly do this, but, yeah, I mean, I'm, I, I said from the start when I did KK's Priest, that's what I'm fully on. I mean, what, what I would love to, you know, I still get to go out and do some three trimmer shows and do my solo shows, but my main priority is KK's Priest. I mean, it's like that, your gig now. That's your gig. I mean, yeah. I think that's the perfect fit for you too, man. It's it's finally, you know, for after a long time, I guess, right? Yeah, it's great. And uh, I'm in, listen, uh, fortunately... I make good money when I do it the other way. So that's the best part about going and doing solo touring and doing solo records. Um, you know, financially, I don't know if anything will be any different, but I would love, I just love to get on these stages in this show and be in this band and, and be a unit. And they're big stages and big shows and big production. And, you know, there's 16 of us out on the road with the crew. I mean, it's a big deal and uh, it's great to do it. And it's great that I'm in the, best shape and top form vocally of my career and and uh yeah, i think so too uh what about the u.s and canada what are we talking here are we talking yeah, about dates that the goal is that's what these first five or six festivals and shows were about they were a showcase to show what we got and what we are and what this show's about so now uh again you know financially it's expensive to tour and it's hard nowadays i mean you don't hear people bitching about it all the time and ken's not gonna but they know more than you do tim the people on the internet they know more than you do and they're telling you what to do right well that's when they keep saying get here get here well we want to get everywhere and that's what these shows are for and and uh you know now tko is the agent so the offers will come in but even when offers come in and it might be great it's like we we financially still can't go there because our production's too expensive you know i mean um but they're coming in now. Numbers have went up. Uh, everybody sees what we're about, that this is a band. It's serious and it's good. And we have fun. Um, that's the big thing I think people can see, too, is it's we put a lot into the show. So our goal, yeah, our goal is to play everywhere. You know, our goal is to go and tour the world. And uh, so that's what the, we're starting to do now. These these shows, we're all about that, you know. Um, and, now and you guys, you guys compliment Judas Priest. You're not like taken away from Priest. I find I would go see Priest and I see KK. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have to pick because I think they're two different entities in a sense. It's, it's definitely two different entities. I mean, we do, you know, we'll do probably less Priest, classic Priest songs as we go on because we're going to be, you know, right. Like I said, we did six songs of KK's Priest. Now we're probably doing eight songs on the UK run, maybe, and we'll probably be doing ten, U- ten KK's Priest songs or more when we start going. Which not? It, it, I know people think it's another Judas Priest, but it's not. It's it's. K, I know that it's name and people don't like. It. I still, if you don't like the name, I understand it. But to get so mad you wouldn't listen to the band and you put us down because you don't like the name. I mean, it's. it's I think it's fine. I don't see anything wrong with the name. I don't understand why people are so uptight about it. We're not reinventing the wheel. We happen to capitalize to go out and do it on something. And you, if we want to, you know, we have to do it. But anyways, 
there's Judas Priest and Ross were two different things. We'll play a whole different catalog. Um, and that's that's how it is. Hopefully we will play more songs off of our era. But there isn't. It's, you got the Judas Priest, and I'm looking forward to their new record coming out. I can't wait. You know, Rob's singing great, and, and uh, um, I'm glad they decided to have two guitar players. And uh, I think it's going to be fantastic. <laughs> All right, man. That's pretty much it. Anything else you want to add? I'm just thinking it's funny that they went to one guitar player. I still think it's a funny thing. Well, um, no, they went to one guitar player, and then they said, wait a second. No, no, we're going to go to two guitars, right? That, that's I'm going to go to uh, – um, I've been talking Ingbe into going into a band with no members at all, and he won't do it. But I, I said we should do a, a band with no guitar players and just – I'm going to – Three bass players. Three bass players and uh, maybe like a, a keyboardist. I am I think it's fantastic. I think I think Priest's new record is going to be fantastic. Like I said, Rob's sounding so good now, and uh, and, and everybody's got it. Listen, you got old school heavy metal. You got Judas Priest, Kickers Priest, Maiden playing top of the game. You got all these tours out there, all, all old school metal fans, and, and fans of real heavy metal concerts should be pretty happy. I agree. I agree. On that note, we're at 30 minutes. Tim, look forward to seeing you in Montreal, Canada next time you're around. Uh, hopefully what? you guys will get around. What do you owe me again when I come there? I owe you, a, I think, Chinese food or something. I can't remember what it is now. It's something. Chinese food? I can't remember. You owe me something, so some kind of food, I think. So <laughs> A big bag of Chinese food. But you wanted Indian, right? Maybe it was Indian food. I can't remember. Oh, I love Indian food. That's my favorite. But I don't yeah. eat quite as I'll just take a low-carb shake. Okay. I'll get you one of those. One of those, uh, what do they call them? Those, uh, those, those shakes there. You could, uh, you can buy at the pharmacy. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's kind of like that. Like insure, those, insure. Yeah, it's kind. Of, I mean, I'm old. I mean, you're with me, so you got. You, we could share and insure together. <laughs> All right, man. Talk to you soon. Good luck. Okay. All right, we'll see you soon, buddy. Good seeing you. All right.